Susie, Michael Ballard, Resiliency for Life, it's good to see you today. Hey, Michael, it's wonderful to see you. I'm so excited to be here. Me too. You are an author upcoming next Monday in this book, 30 Plus One Resilient Stories. So am I. Can you believe it? Yes. It's been a bit of a ride and longer than we planned, but COVID does that to things. But we're persistent and resilient, and we're ready to go. <laughs> so this is a short and sweet interview. We want to know one thing that you do to be more resilient. Oh, I just love that question, and it's in the story, my story, and it's taken from Dr. Edith Eager, Embrace the Possible. She was an Auschwitz survivor. Ah. Oh. That I mean, you want to talk about resiliency, right? I learned for, from her to that with my first step is you have to embrace what's possible. Whatever comes your way, it doesn't matter because it's what you do with it, right? And so for me, really truly, whether it's something that's really hard that's coming my way, today, like almost dying in a car accident, but I just believed, believed, believed that we were going to get better. And then all our behavior went along with that belief, or whether it's something that I really want to do, like moving to a Caribbean island, which we did, my husband and I did. It all began with this belief, embracing the possible. Does that make sense? Oh, it, it, it's very the very believable because it uh, aligned with what I did with my cancer diagnosis. And we talked on right, it earlier. And that was about, I had cancer or is cancer a piece of me? Cancer was a piece of me, but only for a short time. Yeah, it was a seven year battle, but at no time did cancer own me. I didn't allow right. it to own space. It did rent space at 3.30 in the morning on occasion. <laughs> and then I had, prayers, theme music. I had body language. I would go march in the halls. Now I was 137 pounds the first time after surgery and weight loss and digestive tract surgery meant no food for quite a while. But I would march in the halls with my theme music and my visualization and my prayers. And I deputized all my blood cells, red blood cells, white blood cells, and all my immune system were deputized. And they all had two, three, four black belts in martial arts and advanced training. And every time a cancer cell was found, no violence, grabbed by the scruff of the neck, you're going down, buddy. And every time I peed, bye-bye cancer cells. Oh, that's <laughs> really, really, really cool. Because when you we're, believe. our belief believe. systems, we have to manage our belief systems because one young man's belief system was, and his mother made him a fighter helmet out of aluminum foil, which I just love, perfect for a nine-year-old. He had a brain tumor and he had a jet fighter he was in charge of. And he went into his brain with a jet fighter, da -da 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 -da, shooting all the cancer cells. And that's what worked for him. But I'm a little older. I read a lot of books of war and bullets blow things up and make a mess. That didn't work for me because I wanted my mm -hmm. body to heal healthily and blowing holes in the cancer cells would damage the other cells the way I saw it. But he's nine, he's allowed to do it his way. And one of the other believers of visualization, very powerful, he saw his cancer as a rock in a river and the river was just eroding it away. Well, I'm not an expert, but I took extra geography and geology courses back in the day and I knew that that would take 10,000 or a million years. I <laughs> need something faster. Again, yeah. was wrong? The young man wasn't wrong, but for me, as you said, the possibilities were, I had all these blood cells that were deputized with multiple degrees in black in the martial arts, but they were pacifists, no fighting. If you fight us, you're not making it out alive. And mm -hmm. off to the urinary tract where they went through the semi-permeable membrane, one way trip, take it down the toilet, off you go. I love that. You really oh. speak to the point that it's, it Everybody has to find their own way, right? So your way might not be my way, but 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 for me, the most important thing is that you believe that it's possible, whatever it yes. is. And you have to believe with all your might, and then your behavior, your emotions, your thoughts, your actions, everything will follow based on... Like when we almost died in a car accident and my husband had a broken neck, I didn't think that he was going to be paralyzed. I didn't think that we were going to 
um, not have our life back, I thought, yep, he's going to get well, I'm going to get well, we're going to be skiing again. It also didn't happen all at once, but it was always, always, always about that belief that we would. I got told by one expert with good intentions that I was too happy. So, <laughs> so that's another conversation for another time. So thank you. One thing, believe in the possibilities. That's just brilliant wisdom. And thank you for that. And we'll wrap this short sure. and up. And I look forward to when we have a longer one. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Sure.